We're now going to continue to look at our new data type called string and we're going to begin by considering a couple of very special strings in particular the string that is known as the empty string as opposed to the string that contains spaces. These two strings are oftentimes confused with one another and it's important to see the difference. First of all remember that a string is a quote delimited sequence of characters. So for example the string hello contains five characters. In that case I used a double quote. I could have used a single quote. And as we saw last time it's always possible to use an assignment statement to create a variable which is a reference to a string and when I evaluate that variable, I get the value of that string back. Now, we said last time that the length function will tell me the number of characters in the string. And in this case, len of my name, my name refers to the string David, has five characters, and so the value is five. There's a very special string that consists of no characters. It's known as the empty string. And the empty string is simply the quoted string with nothing in between. And so for example if I do single quote single quote what that returns to me is the string that has two quotes but it's around nothing. There's nothing in between. And we can tell that that string is in fact the empty string if we run it through the len function because it says that the length of that string is zero characters. And so a string that is in a sense empty, that has no characters, that has a length of zero, is a valid string. It's sometimes called the initial string and most often called the empty string. Now the confusion often lies in the fact that the empty string has quote delimits around nothing, but it's also possible to have a quoted string that contains only blank characters. And so, for example, if I were to create a string, quote, space, 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 quote, what I've just done is to create a sequence of three characters, but each character is in fact a space. And to be sure, that in fact that is a real string, notice that the len function does return 3. So spaces are characters and they can appear inside of strings but when they appear by themselves they still take up space. In other words it's not the case that an empty string and a string of only spaces is the same and we can see that by using the len function the empty string will become very useful to us later on as we start to work with patterns of constructing and, and deconstructing strings. We're now going to move on to a few more of the simple string sequence operators and we've already seen concatenation and repetition and we've just used the len function. The next operator that we're going to see is an operator called the index operator. In order to understand the index operator, we have to understand something about the characters that exist within the string. And so, if we go back to our variable called my name, and we look at it pictorially, what we know is that my name is a reference to a data object which consists of a sequence of five characters. And so, as we saw earlier, when we evaluate the variable my name, we then are given back the string that my name refers to. But if we look at that string of characters, D, A, V, I, D, it's important to realize that that string is a sequence of characters. We said that it's ordered. It has a beginning and it has an end. And the order is typically seen from left to right. And so what that means then is that it's possible for us to consider this entire string, but it's also possible for us to consider parts of this string, and in particular we can consider the individual characters of the string. And so the way that we 
refer to a specific character in a string is by a positional value. The D, the first character here, is going to have position 0. The A is going to be at position 1, the V at position 2, the I at position 3, and the little d will be at position 4. And so, just as with the default range function, we start counting the position values for the characters in a string starting with 0. Now, we can use these position values then in the indexing operator. The indexing operator is square brackets with an integer in between that tells us the position that we want to access. So, for example, if I say I would like to access the string referred to by my name, I see that it's the entire string with five characters. But if I say I would like to access my name and then indexed by, and then I can provide the value of a position. So for example, if I say indexed by 2, recall in our picture that position 2 was the character V. And so the index operator, the square bracket, basically says I would like to access the particular character at that position and if we come back over here then and hit return we see that what's returned to us is in fact the character at that position. And so following the same pattern my name indexed by 4 will be the little d uh, my name indexed by 0 will be the capital D and so on. And so now the values of the individual characters as well as the entire string are available to us by either evaluating the variable my name or by using the indexing operator. It's important to notice that this positional numbering scheme is working from left to right. And even though the length of this string is 5, the highest positional value is 4. The way we might want to think about that is that in general, the positions go from 0 to the length of the string minus 1. And we can actually use that in our uh, expression. We can say my name indexed by the len of my name minus 1. And if you now think about what this means, we're going to index into the string. The length of my name is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. And so if we take the length of the string and subtract 1, that will give us an access to the very last character of the string. If we tried to do this and go to the length of the string, because perhaps we assume that that's the last character, we're going to find that it tells us there's an error. And notice the error is that the index is out of range. The index is too high because the length of the string is 5. And if we try to index into the character at position 5, as we've seen, there isn't one because we go from 0 to 4. Now the other thing that's important to realize here is that we can also consider these positions working not left to right, but rather from right to left. And if we think about this from right to left, the positions are actually counted using negative numbers. And so the little d would be position negative 1, the i would be position negative 2, the v would be position negative 3, the a would be position negative 4, and the d would be position negative 5. And so if we think about from left to, or from left to right, 0 to 4, but from right to left, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and we can use those values as well. So my name indexed by negative 1 also returns the little d, my name indexed by negative 5 will return the capital D. And so sometimes it's handy to think about being able to index the values of the characters by position going right to left, and sometimes it's useful to go from left to right. And so Python provides both techniques for access.